Have you ever wondered why we don't have the all singing, all dancing robots that's been promised for many years in science fiction, in books, plays and movies? We look around us and see robots starting to infil infiltrate our lives, but we still seem a long way away from our robotic companion who will do the dishes, take out the rubbish and drive us to our destination. I have a robotic vacuum cleaner, which we've named Benny. Now, Benny is wonderful at cleaning the floor. He does random movement, he wanders round, and he eventually manages to cover the full floor. You can now get vacuum cleaners, robotic vacuum cleaners, that follow maps of your floor and thus ensure that you get the full area. But, if you put down a long pile carpet or you encounter an electric cable, it sensors can't really deal with that. And it resorts to just sitting there, flashing a red light and giving out a huge long beep calling for human aid. And as for stairs, no chance. So they can be Wi-Fi enabled and that allows you closer control. You can move it around and steer it. But I suspect that our little robot, Benny, is much more interested in talking to the TV than to us. In fact, it works well, but within certain constraints. Robotics and artificial intelligence as a subject came into being in the 1950s and 60s. And at the time, there was a huge hype about the possibilities that could be achieved within the next 20 years. Then reality hit, raised its little head, and the promised dates for the all singing, all dancing robot came and went. The Government Science Research Council commissioned a report called the Light Hill Report in 1973. And this was there to examine the state of artificial intelligence and robotic research in the UK. It was highly critical of robotics research, in particular the area of actually building physical robots. And that led to a lack of confidence in the research area and therefore a lack of ongoing government funding. And only three universities in the UK were given grants over the next period of time. To quote from the report, in no part of the field have the discoveries made so far produced the major impact that was then promised. And that's, that's quite a damning report, really. So the actual area of building robots was not funded very much over the next few years. Now, in contrast, the area of what was called computer-based control um, had a lot of funding, especially from industrial companies. And this was in the area of robot arms, manipulator arms. And this led to the successful development and incorporation of robotic arms in assembly and manufacture. And you'll see lots of factories with these huge arms um, performing assemblies. Now, the, this meant that the robots were highly engineered for the environment. They were put into highly structured environments and they were caged away from human beings, both for the safety of the human beings and for the robot, in that the humans couldn't come and interfere with what it was doing. But in other areas, mobile robots, flying robots, the robots didn't leave the labs until many years to come. So what was the problem? Why did these robots with human-like capabilities fail, fail to materialize? Well, the extent of the difficulty of the problem of building robots was severely underestimated. The thinking at the time was you can build a system to sense what the robot's doing. You can build a separate system which plans where it's to go. And you manipulate, a, you, know, you build a system to manipulate objects. Pop them all together and the problem solved. No, it has since become clear that this is not the case. And as the real world intervenes and throws up uncertainties and unpredictable in interactions, 
You've got dynamical worlds. You've got things that move and change that cannot be pre-programmed. So jump forward to the early 2000s. Among the other shows, the TV program Robot Wars got people interested in robots once more. Being a judge on it for a couple of years gave me personal insight into how we could now provide very robust engineered systems. But it was still very much the human being that was in control. Autonomous systems were still a long way away. Again, jump forward another 20 years. We are starting now to see robots join us in the real world. So why now? What has changed? Well, one of the important things that we see during the last 50 years is that we have much smaller, faster, more powerful computers. We have better materials, more suitable for building the flexible, complex robots that we need that will work in our environment. We have much better sensor capability. In the early days, if you had a robot with a camera, you would not have very good resolution. Now we have very good resolution and the problem is still how to understand what the picture actually shows. We can see as in a camera image, you've got a set of pixels, but what do they actually mean? And that's really one of the problems we're still encountering. And overall, we have a better understanding of how all this interacts with the real world. We have robots that can work beside us rather than in cages. We have drones which are able to do limited deliveries in quite set environments. And as previously described, we have things like Benny, my little robot vacuum cleaner, that will do our bidding around the house. Soon, we are set, told we will have autonomous cars that will drive us round the roads. But we still don't have that initial vision from back in the 50s and 60s of the general purpose robot that can do everything. If we think about this though, all humans and living creatures are actually adapted to specific environments. Some human beings probably, are more general than others. Even though we can navigate a diverse landscape of abilities, we still, if we have problems with vision, need glasses to see. We need binoculars and telescopes to allow us to see much further. And we have machines that allow us, with our limited sensory system of eyes, to see into the ultraviolet and infrared. So I leave you with the thought that perhaps we will never have that general purpose robot dreamed of in the 50s. This may be far too complex and unnecessary. Perhaps instead, we will look to have robots that are adapted very well to particular tasks. And these robots could perhaps use their own machines or our machines or other robots if they need to perform more specialised tasks. Thank you.